Welcome to Revival Cycles Tech Talk. I'm Stefan, and in this episode, we are talking about the smallest analog gauge from Moto Gadget called the Motoscope Tiny. All right, so the Motoscope Tiny. Like a lot of the Moto Gadget products, comes in a plain, boring white box. Now, inside we find what we're looking for, which is the gauge itself. And as you can see, it is quite tiny. For an analog gauge, it's got the little sweep needle, and then there is also an LCD uh, display that's at the bottom that can display additional information, and also all the warning lights for kind of uh, the high beam indicator, neutral light, turn signal indicator, and even uh, an oil pressure lamp. So that's all contained in this one tiny little gauge. Like all the Moto Gadget stuff, it's really well built. It's got an aluminum housing, and they even go through the trouble to label uh, the mounting screw size and thread on the back so that you don't have to guess, is that a, an, M, an M3 or is that a 1024? No guesswork, you get the right one the first time. And then there's this cable that is full of lots of tiny little wires. We'll talk about those wires in just a second. All the Moto Gadget stuff is really well built. This is no exception. You can feel the weight of it. This is a quality piece of uh, equipment, and it's not something you're just going to have to replace next year. Glass is super clean and clear. You can see everything in this gauge, and there are a lot of other choices available on RevivalCycles.com for the different faces and different bezels, and you want to check those out there because the product photography is way better than what you can see on this video with me waving it around. So that's the gauge, and we can take a look at the other things you get in the box. The first thing we pull out are a couple of fuses. Now these fuses are important because they will protect these tiny little wires from lighting on fire if there's an inadvertent short and it will also protect the gauge if something weird happens in the rest of your electrical system. So please put these in, they're a very very good idea. Then we also find a bag full of lots of other stuff. Uh, this is some mounting hardware and a speed sensor that you will need to mount on the wheel so the gauge actually can tell that the wheels are turning. So we'll start with this speed sensor. This is a very simple instrument. It's just a magnetic reed switch. So there's a pair of contacts in here. When a magnet moves close to it, it will cause those contacts to close, and then it will send a signal to the gauge. It will basically count that there has been one pulse, and then you will calibrate the circumference of the wheel and then program in the number of pulses per revolution of the wheel. So if you have two magnets, that would be two pulses, one magnet, one pulse, pretty simple. But you're going to need to do a bit of custom fabrication to get this gate or get this uh, sensor mounted in the correct location near a wheel where it can actually pick up a magnet rotating past it. It sounds complicated, it's not too bad, but this is one that you're going to need to work out a bit on your own. So what else is in the bag? We get a bunch of little things in here. This piece of paper is mostly useless, so we won't talk about it. Uh, the first thing we pull out are a pair of diodes. Not going to talk about details yet, but we'll get to this. Just note, there's some diodes. And we get a tiny little button. This is a very simple, basic, uh, momentary push button. It does have solder terminals on the back, so you're going to need to be able to uh, proficiently solder wires to this if you intend to use it. This button is used to cycle through the different functions of the gauge, to reset the odometer, um, to reset the accelerometers, anything else that you might want to, to do with the gauge. This is how you interact with it. Um, if you're using the M switches and you've got a six button setup, normally you're going to have one spare button and that's perfect to use for the configuration button and you wouldn't need this one. Uh, but if you're integrating with a stock bike and using stock controls, you may need to find a spot to mount this either in the headlight or on the bars or in the triple clamps or someplace where you can easily access it while you're riding so you can cycle through the functions while you're riding. Uh, what else is in here? Um, there's a bunch of these little uh, crimp connector things that if you've been watching these videos for any length of time you know that I can't stand them and I really recommend you do not use these. Much better to use a proper automotive style connector, uh, preferably waterproof if you can manage it. Uh, if you don't have room, you can do the heat shrink and solder technique to splice all these wires. And if you want a tutorial on how to do that, take a look at our heat shrink video. It goes over the different techniques for splicing wires and soldering and heat shrinking them. Then we also get a couple of uh, mounting screws so you can bolt it up to a, a mounting plate. And then there are also a couple of very small 
neodymium magnets. These go with that reed switch that we talked about just a minute ago, and you would want to get these uh, attached to the wheel so that they pass by the reed switch and lets the gauge know that the wheel's rotating. That's pretty much what we get in the bag full of goodies. And the last thing in the box is the instructions. Uh, the instructions have a lot of information in them. They are a little bit difficult to read, in part because they've been translated from German, but the information is in there, and sometimes you read it a couple times, use a little bit of uh, windage to kind of interpret what they intend it to mean, and you can usually figure out what's going on with this thing. All right, so back to the wires that we talked about. So, uh, to save you the effort of reading the manual for yourself, I'm going to work, uh, just talk through what these wires do. Uh, the easy ones are black, that's ground, red, that's power in, and the red wire in this case is constant power. This needs to be connected to the battery at all times, and that's how the clock, this does have a time of day clock on it, that way it will remember what time of day it is when you turn the bike off. And then in order to let the gauge know it's time to wake up and go to work, there is a brown wire. That one gets connected to switched plus 12 volts positive. And those are the first three down. Next, we get the orange wire. That is for that speed sensor. And one side of this gets connected to the speed sensor. The other side of the speed sensor gets connected to ground. Uh, then we also have a purple wire. The purple wire is used for an oil pressure switch so that you can have a warning lamp to let you know that your oil pressure is uh, not up to, up to snuff. If you start and you don't see the lamp, that means your switch might be bad. If you start and the lamp doesn't go out, that means your oil pressure is bad. Both of those are not good things. So good thing to have. Uh, blue. Blue is for the high beam indicator. There's a small LED on this gauge that will light up and show you that the high beam is on when it is on. So this gets connected to the high beam wire of your headlight. Then green. This is the one that goes to the configuration button and allows you to cycle through the various functions on the gauge. Uh, next up, we've got the white wire. Now the white wire is for your neutral switch. This gives you the nice little green N on the gauge so that you can tell that you're a neutral and don't let the clutch out and make an embarrassing faux pas while you drop your bike on the ground. Uh, next and last is the yellow wire. On this gauge, the yellow wire is the turn signal wire, and we only have one of them. And that's where we get into those diodes that we talked about earlier. Uh, diodes are like a one-way valve for electricity. The, the current will only flow through it in one direction, and it will be blocked completely in the other direction. And this is necessary in this application because if you connect both of your turn signal wires to this without the diodes, it will power both of them. It will flow through one turn signal, come up to here to this wire, and then it'll continue flowing through the other wire over to your other turn signal and turn that one on too. So you basically have four-way flashers all the time, no matter whether you're left or right or otherwise. Using the diodes, you put them, you, uh, you'll solder them onto this wire with the little bar marker pointed towards the gauge, and that way the current can flow from the turn signal through the diode that's that's being powered into that little yellow wire, light up the thing on the gauge itself, and then as the current tries to flow back into the other turn signal, it gets blocked by that second capacitor, or sorry, second diode. Uh, same thing in reverse when you're using the other side. So not too difficult, just a little bit of soldering and heat shrink. Again, check out that video on soldering splices and heat shrink. And that's pretty much what we have to talk about on this gauge. Uh, we are gonna put together another video on configuration for this gauge, and that's very useful after you get your installation complete and you can see exactly how to set this thing up. So there you have it. That's the Motoscope Tiny. Um, I encourage you to check out all the great products at RevivalCycles.com, and there you can see the various uh, different versions and different styles of this Motoscope Tiny gauge. It really is a nice piece of kit. It has a lot of features, and if you have any trouble with your application or your setup, send us an email at tech support at revivalcycles.com or give us a phone call. And because we do use the same products that we sell, we're always here to help and we can get your project sorted and back on the road as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.